Have you ever wondered what happens when two vibrant cultures blend over centuries? How did a small region on the western coast of India become a melting pot of Portuguese and Indian traditions? Today we're diving into the fascinating story of the Portuguese in India, particularly in Goa, a tale of exploration, cultural fusion, and enduring legacy. Let's embark on this journey together. The Age of Exploration, a period marked by intense curiosity and advancements in navigation, set the stage for the Portuguese arrival in India. Portugal, aiming to expand its empire, sought new territories and resources, including African gold and Asian spices. This quest drove Portuguese mariners like Vasco da Gama to explore previously unknown sea routes, leading them down the coast of West Africa, around the Cape of Good Hope, and across the Indian Ocean to India and beyond. This era was not just about discovery, it was about establishing global trade networks, which led to significant cultural and economic impacts worldwide. The Portuguese Empire, started around 1420, eventually spanned three continents, creating the first global intercontinental empire driven by a combination of exploration, trade, and colonization. Vasco da Gama's arrival near Calicut on May 20, 1498, marked a significant milestone in this journey. This event was the culmination of a series of Portuguese explorations that began with the conquest of the Moroccan city of Ceuta in 1415. The Portuguese settled the Madeira and Azores Islands in the 1420s and 1430s, and by the late 15th century they had rounded the Cape of Good Hope. Da Gama's journey, starting in July 1497, was a turning point, opening up a direct sea route to India. His return to Portugal in August 1499 was met with great celebration, leading to extensive public works in Lisbon to foster future expeditions and trade. This period was marked by a sense of exultation and confidence in Portuguese maritime capabilities. Upon their arrival in India, the Portuguese encountered several challenges. Adapting to the tropical climate of Goa and understanding the complex local customs and social structures were immediate concerns. Additionally, establishing effective trade and governance in this new and unfamiliar territory posed significant obstacles. The Portuguese had to navigate a delicate balance of diplomacy and conflict to establish their dominance. Their initial settlements were focused on building a strong foundation for their presence, including forts, churches, and administrative buildings, vital for their prolonged stay in the region. The early years were a period of learning and adaptation as the Portuguese navigated the complexities of establishing themselves in a land vastly different from their own. When the Portuguese first arrived in Goa in 1510, under the leadership of Afonso de Albuquerque, they were focused on establishing a significant and lasting presence. They captured the city from the Adil Shahis, marking the beginning of a new era in Goa's history. This conquest was not initially a part of Albuquerque's designated mission, which was to capture Ormus, Aden, and Malacca. Yet, the opportunity presented itself when a local privateer, Timoji, aligned with the Portuguese and aided in capturing Goa. The initial settlements by the Portuguese in Goa were strategically designed to reinforce their hold over the region. They constructed a city with defensive walls, a fort, governor's residence, and various quarters for accommodation, segregated based on religion and occupation. Churches and other European-style buildings were erected, although the most prominent ones seen today date back to the 17th century. This period also witnessed the introduction of religious intolerance with the arrival of the Inquisition in 1560, leading to the destruction of temples and the prohibition of Hindu ceremonies and customs. Despite these efforts, the conversion of the local population to Christianity had limited success. The social structure in Portuguese Goa was complex. Europeans held the highest status, with social display commonly achieved through extravagant clothing and the number of servants and armed men one had. The European community itself was divided into various classes based on origin, nobility, clergy, and the army. Below them were locals who adopted Christianity and then the majority Hindu population, which retained its societal structure topped by the Brahmins. Goa soon became the administrative capital of all Portuguese colonies east of the Cape of Good Hope, making it a crucial hub for the empire. 
The city was governed by a viceroy who was accountable only to the King of Portugal. Legal matters were overseen by a high court, with European-style laws applied primarily to Europeans and mixed-race populations, while Hindus used their traditional legal mechanisms. This period marked the beginning of Goa's golden age, driven by the profits from the spice trade. Impressive architectural feats like the cathedral, the largest church in Asia at the time, were constructed, and Goa thrived with a population of 40,000 people and about 300 churches, reflecting its status as the vice-imperial seat for Portuguese rulers. The Portuguese control of Goa lasted for four centuries, significantly influencing Goan culture, cuisine, and architecture. It was only in 1961 that Goa was liberated and became a part of India, marking the end of Portuguese reign but leaving a lasting impact on the state's unique culture and traditions. The architectural landscape of Goa, shaped significantly by the Portuguese, presents a stunning amalgamation of European and Indian styles. This unique blend resulted in a vibrant and distinct architectural identity that is evident across Goa. Key to this transformation was the introduction of the Baroque style, prevalent in the 16th and 17th centuries, known for its ornate and elaborate decoration. The Basilica of Bom Jesus in Old Goa is a prime example of this style, with its richly decorated interior and ornate facade. Additionally, the Manueline style, combining Gothic and Renaissance architecture, was introduced characterized by intricate stone carvings with maritime motifs. The Church of Our Lady of Immaculate Conception in Panaji is a beautiful representation of this style, marked by its white facade adorned with manueline motifs. Moreover, the forts in Goa, such as Aguada Fort and Fort Tiracol, are notable for their Portuguese military architecture with massive walls, towers, and bastions. Language in Goa also reflects this cultural intermingling. Konkani, the local language, has integrated Portuguese words, symbolizing centuries of coexistence and cultural exchange. This linguistic blend is a testament to the enduring impact of Portuguese influence on the local culture. Goan festivals vividly showcase this mixed heritage. Celebrations such as Christmas and Carnival, infused with Portuguese traditions, are held alongside local Hindu festivals embodying a spirit of communal harmony and cultural integration. This blend of festivities highlights the rich, diverse cultural fabric of Goa, forged over centuries of Portuguese presence. The religious legacy of the Portuguese in Goa is most prominently reflected in its churches and chapels, many of which are recognized as UNESCO World Heritage Sites. These monuments, like the Basilica of Bom Jesus, which houses the remains of St. Francis Xavier, and the Church of Our Lady of the Rosary, built in 1543, exemplify the blend of Manueline, Mannerist, and Baroque styles spread across Asia by Portuguese missions. The Say Cathedral of Goa, another notable monument, serves as an outstanding example of the influence of Portuguese architecture in Asia. The construction of this cathedral began in the first decades of colonization and was completed in stages over many years, with its final facade completed in 1631. A unique aspect of this cultural legacy is the eligibility of Goans for Portuguese citizenship. This policy connects back to their colonial history and provides a modern link to Portugal. It reflects the deep historical and cultural ties between Goa and Portugal, continuing to influence the identity of Goans today. The Goan lifestyle is a blend of relaxed Indian ethos and European influences, evident in its leisure and community-focused way of life. This contrasts starkly with the fast-paced lifestyle of India's bustling cities. The influence of Portuguese culture is also reflected in Goan art and music, which combine classical and folk styles from both East and West. Traditional Indian music in Goa incorporates Portuguese melodies and instruments, creating a unique cultural tapestry. And the education system in Goa, established during Portuguese rule, laid the foundation for a robust system that continues to blend Indian and Portuguese curricula. This legacy of education has played a critical role in building bridges between cultures and contributing to the rich intellectual and cultural fabric of the region. 
Tourism in Goa has evolved into a vital economic driver, attracting visitors from across the globe with its beautiful beaches, heritage sites, and cultural festivals. This popularity can be attributed to the state's picturesque natural scenery, its unique beaches, and the cultural diversity stemming from its Portuguese heritage. However, the increasing number of tourists, from 126,130 in 1996 to around 2.4 million in 2004, has brought both benefits and challenges. While tourism has reduced dependency on traditional sectors like fishing and agriculture, it has also led to environmental and social concerns, such as the commercialization of tradition, destruction of heritage sites, and issues related to substance abuse, human trafficking, and alcoholism. Politically, the Portuguese governance model has had a lasting influence on Goa. Elements of this system continued to shape local governance even after Goa's liberation from Portuguese rule. This historical influence is evident in the administration and political structures of the region. Environmental impacts are also notable. The introduction of new plant species by the Portuguese altered Goa's landscape and biodiversity. Some species, like cashew, have become integral to Goa's economy and culture, significantly influencing the region's ecological makeup. Socially, Goa represents a diverse tapestry of origins, marked by the centuries-long intermingling of Portuguese and Indian communities. This cultural fusion has created a unique socio-cultural identity for Goans, evident in the region's lifestyle, traditions, and social structures. The blend of Portuguese and Indian influences is visible in various aspects of Goan life, from architecture and cuisine to language and festivals, reflecting a rich heritage and diverse community spirit. Conservation efforts in Goa have been increasingly focused on preserving the rich heritage of Portuguese-era structures. The Goa government has taken initiatives to formulate a heritage conservation policy. This policy is aimed not only at documenting the existing heritage structures, but also at giving them a new lease of life. The state-based Charles Correa Foundation has been involved in documenting and listing heritage buildings across Goa. The legal system in Goa still retains imprints of the Portuguese legal framework. Certain laws and legal practices from the Portuguese era continue to influence the region's judiciary, reflecting the lasting impact of colonial rule on Goa's legal and administrative systems. Looking towards the future, the integration of the Portuguese legacy in Goa's evolving identity poses both challenges and opportunities. The preservation of historical sites and the continuation of cultural traditions are essential for maintaining the unique character of Goa. However, there is also a need for balancing preservation with modern development. This dynamic interplay between the past and present in Goa opens up endless possibilities for cultural growth and understanding, ensuring that the region's unique identity continues to thrive and adapt in the contemporary world. As we've seen, the Portuguese presence in Goa has created a unique cultural landscape, blending Indian and Portuguese traditions. This enduring legacy continues to shape Goa's identity and offers a fascinating glimpse into the power of cultural synthesis. How do you think this legacy will evolve? Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for more intriguing journeys into history and culture.